It was November 8, 1947, and a civil engineer named Charles Ellett Jr. was given an impossible task. He was commissioned to build a bridge across the Niagara Gorge. How many of you have ever been to Niagara Falls, right there between Canada and the U.S.? A few of you have. It is 825 feet across. It is 225 feet up and down. I mean, it is, it is a long way across, and the engineers could not figure out how to get the first cable across, okay? It was an impossible task. How are we gonna get the first cable across this chasm? How are we going to build a bridge so a train can go across? Well, a local iron worker came up with the uh, idea. We're going to have a kite flying contest, the guy says, and we're going to fly a kite with a string across the Niagara Gorge. And a guy named Homan Walsh won the $10 cash prize. Can you imagine? He flew a kite across the gorge and it landed. The next day, they pulled a little bit bigger string. The next day, they pulled a rope across. And then they pulled a stranded cable that was big enough that eventually they got several cables across. And trains, the first suspension bridge that a 170-ton locomotive could ride over. Can you imagine? feeling that riding in a train. It started with a kite string, one kite string. And let me tell you folks, every task does. It starts small. And in the Bible, we're told, never make fun of small beginnings. That's part of the text that we're gonna read today for the message. Uh, what that said to me is if, if I do little things, like their big things, I can depend on God to do things big like their little things. I can depend on God to be there and support me. And this text comes from Zechariah, and it's going to help us unpack the fourth habit in the book, Win the Day. And the fourth habit is called Fly the Kite. Before we uh, read that text, I want to talk about, I want to shoot you straight. Let's put it that way. I know people, you know people, who say they'll give more when they start making more. Have you heard that before? I, uh, I love those people, but I'm not buying what they're selling. If you aren't generous with a little time, talent, and treasure, you are not going to be generous with a lot of treasure. Generosity always starts here, right now in the moment. I know people who say they'll serve more when they have more time. Yeah, no. You don't find time, you make time. I know people who say they'll step up when the big opportunity presents itself. And I don't think that's right either. If you're not seizing the small opportunities that are all around you all the time, then you are not living to your full potential. You are not winning the day. Here's the bottom line and the big idea. Everything I do or how I do anything is how I'll do everything. How you do anything is how you'll do everything. If you form good habits in your life and you start knocking things off your to-do list and doing things, you are going to find it easier and easier throughout all aspects of your life to get things done. If you're faithful with a little, you'll be faithful with a lot. And so for that reason, you are invited by God to dream big. How you dream is how big your God is. If you dream big, that's how big God is going to be in your life. But Zachar this, this text we're going to read, its basic idea that I want you to listen for is it's not just about dreaming big. It is about starting small and thinking long 
And when you do those things and you're strategic about how you win the day every day, well, that's what flying the kite is all about. A single kite string can eventually become a bridge between two countries. That's how easy it is. Let me set up this text before we read it. Zerubbabel, say that with me, Zerubbabel, that's a hard one. He is the leader, the governor of the remnant that returned from Judah from exile. And he is given a God-sized vision. Zerubbabel is to rebuild the temple that Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed in 586 B.C. Let's read his story. It's in Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. So the angel explained that it was the following message of the Lord to Zerubbabel. I am the Lord all-powerful, so don't depend on your own power or strength, but depend on my spirit. Zerubbabel, that mountain in front of you will be leveled to the ground. Then you will bring out the temple's most important stones and shout, God has been very kind. The Lord spoke to me again and said, Zerubbabel, lay the foundation for the temple, and he will complete it. Then everyone will know that you were sent by me, the Lord all-powerful. Those who have made fun of this day of small beginnings will celebrate when they see Zerubbabel holding this important stone. Those seven lamps represent my eyes and the eyes of the Lord, and they see everything on this earth. The word of God for the people of God. So the very first thing I notice when I'm reading the, the text is this leader, Zerubbabel, he can't depend on his own power, but he's told to depend on the Holy Spirit to rebuild the temple. And folks, that sounds right to me because without the Holy Spirit, I am a below average individual. You know what I mean? I, I need God to guide me. Anybody else like that? Because the truth is, God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies the call. I love that. God doesn't call people who are qualified God qualifies the people who are called. And the good news is this, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can do anything because the Holy Spirit is the X factor. The Spirit is the, different between the, the difference between the best you can do and the best God can do. With the Holy Spirit, the governor of Judah was able to rebuild the temple. And I want to let you in on a little secret. God wants to do a lot of things in you and through you that are beyond your ability and qualifications. But you know what? With your Holy Spirit right there alongside of you, you will be qualified to fulfill those hopes and dreams God has for you. You know what happened to Zerubbabel is he stopped worrying about how he was going to build the temple. He stopped talking to God about the mountain that was in his way, and he started talking to the mountain and telling the mountain about his God. And one stone by one stone, they dismantled that mountain and rebuilt the temple. And that's how Zerubbabel flipped the script, which was the first habit that we talked about from when the day. And that was basically, you don't deny the, uh, the obstacles that are in your way. You face them with unwavering faith. You know, I have no idea what mountain is staring you in the face. It could be anxiety or addiction or anger, but the mountain of injustice and unforgiveness can stand in your way. Uh, depression and frustration. Uh, it could even be a mountain range that's in your way. But folks, this is a time when we're thinking about these issues to form new habits in our lives. Because God is still the God who makes sidewalks through the sea 
God is the God who turns water into wine. God is the God who moves mountains. And in this text, we have all the habits that we've been talking about. All of them are there. Uh, habit one, when he's speaking to the mountain. If you think about habit two, which was kiss the wave, uh, that's when the mountain is not the enemy to Zerubbabel anymore. Uh, the obstacle is the way to fulfill the dream that he has to build that temple. Um, with faith as small as a mustard seed, we can do anything with God on our side. And also habit three, which we talked about, kiss the frog, it's here. Because it's these high leverage habits that have a domino effect over time. And that, that habit was one where we talked about uh, if you want God to do the super, you have to do the natural. But if we go down to verse 10, that's where we get the fourth habit in this text that we read today, fly the kite. Those who have made fun of this day of small beginnings will celebrate when they see Zerubbabel holding this important stone. Stop and think about this. God is rejoicing before the building even begins in this story. Uh, Zerubbabel doesn't even have building permits. He does not have a plan. He has not broken ground. All he has is a cornerstone. And God is already celebrating. We want to do amazing things for God, but that isn't our job. God is the one who does amazing things for us. This book, Win the Day, is about our job. Our job is to consecrate ourselves to God one day at a time to win the day. And if we do our job, God will do the job too. If we fly the kite, God will build the bridge. We can easily become overwhelmed when we start setting goals for our life to win the day. You know, when we become overwhelmed, we know that's true because like how many, 75% of the New Year's resolutions I made in my life, I never did. You know, it's hard to set goals and then keep them. But this is, this habit we're talking about today, fly the kite, it's as simple as one, two, three. What this text says to me is give yourself a start date to start working on something. And then go ahead and dream big, but start small. And the third thing is if you want every day to count, then count every day. Mark Batterson, who wrote this book, Win the Day, uh, talks about in this chapter, he, he talks about how he always, all his life, felt called to write a book. Uh, one problem with that was when he was in school, he took one of those tests, those aptitude tests, and the test told him, above all things, avoid trying to be a writer because you aren't going to be very good at it. Anybody ever taken a test like that? Yes. Well, Writing was not a natural thing to Mark, but it was a dream that he felt God had given him. And remember what, uh, what he said in his book, God doesn't call the qualified, God qualifies the call. And so here's the deal. Here's what uh, Mark did. He read 3,000 books. He took them apart. He studied how they were worded, how they were written. He lived a bunch of his life as a pastor, but he hadn't written a word. And then one day he was just fed up. And so he set a goal, a God-sized goal. He said, I'm not going to go past my 35th birthday until I have a book to show for it. You know, he took sermons and published those and blog entries and published those. But Mark started working at writing a book. Some of you have been dreaming of this, that, and the other. You've been dreaming about different things you could do. Mark did write books. He's written several books now. And the test was wrong, by the way, about whether or not he could write a book. 
You've got to give yourself a deadline. That's what Mark did. And if you back up a step, the first thing you got to do is give yourself a start date. You've got to really start working on these goals. And let me get rid of some of the most common excuses we use to get started. Uh, once in a while, you hear somebody say, well, I'm not really qualified. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. Uh, you say, I don't have the education. I don't have enough experience. Who does? God's going to go along with you. Remember God qualifies the call. The second thing you always hear people say is, well, I'm just not ready. I wasn't ready to get married. We weren't ready to have kids. I wasn't ready to be the pastor of slash church, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Newsflash, God gives you a green light. That's when it's time to go. You know, you're not waiting around for anything. It's on the job training. It's on the spirit training. Three, I'm just waiting for the right situation. People are always blaming their circumstances for the reason why they're where they are. Folks, that's not a good excuse either. It's time for you to take advantage of the situations God puts before you and make the most of them. And I could say this too. Go public with your God-sized goals. That way my friends and neighbors, they can be make me accountable, right? They can say, are you working on that book that you were going to write? Did you get anything done? It all comes back to this. We need an uncompromising commitment to continual improvement. Little by little, and what happens then is it starts adding up, just like compound interest. All this is to say, go ahead and dream big. But you have to make a plan and you have to start small. You have to fly the kite across the chasm. And if you do that, some impossibly high mountains, they'll become flat like a floor. And then you can have even bigger dreams. And I'm going to close with this because they're the words of Zechariah the prophet. Don't make fun of small beginnings. Just Set a goal. Start today. Make a step forward. Seize the day. Win the day. We have to go after those God-sized dreams one small step at a time. We don't need to wait for anything. We just need to roll out the string and fly the kite. Give yourself a start date. You can't finish what you don't start, can you? Dream big, start small, and think long. What kite do you need to fly? What are you waiting for? Win the day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.